Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back. I appreciate it as always. Thank you very much and hope your day is going super awesome. I had barbecue for lunch, feeling good. God, I love that stuff. Okay, so you didn't come here for food recommendations. You came here for some photo tips, I hope. And I'm in Luminar Flex today. I did a video, I'll put it up there. It was a couple of weeks ago, I think. And it was called something along the lines of like the five most versatile filters in Luminar. One of those filters was adjustable gradient. And I'm gonna talk about that today because I had a comment by a gentleman and um, thank you for the comment. It was actually a great idea for me to dive into that filter, which is what I'm gonna do now. Um, and the comment was basically, hey, I don't really understand, um, and I'm making uh, some sort of <laughs> terrible paraphrase of the, uh, of the comment, but bottom line is this gentleman was asking like, what is like the gradient? How does it work? Uh, I don't remember how he worded it, but the point is, um, it wasn't really clear uh, how things are being affected in the photo by my other video. So let's hop into a photo. I got one right here. Um, and I'm gonna use the adjustable gradient to edit this photo. Now I'm not saying that um, adjustable gradient is the only filter you need for a photo. However, um, it can work really well because if you look at it, you've got a top section and a bottom section. And within each of those, you've got exposure, which is light. You've got contrast, you've got vibrance and warmth. So you're basically able to adjust the light, the contrast and the color in one filter. So that's why I think it's one of the most versatile and one of my favorite filters. However, before I edit this photo with that filter, I'm gonna edit a blank piece of paper um, and hopefully you'll see why. Uh, this is how I'm gonna hopefully illustrate what the filter does to your photo. So as I said, there's two tabs, a top and a bottom. And as I dive into this filter, I just wanna show you kind of what happens. So uh, top, all right, I'm gonna take exposure and I'm gonna go all the way down. And all I'm trying to do with a blank piece of paper is illustrate really clearly kind of what's happening uh, when you use the filter. So as you can see, the top of the photo it gets darker, right? Um, I can change a contrast if I want, etc. I'll leave that alone. You can change the vibrance if you want, which is not really gonna do anything on a great piece of paper. But warmth is, I can make it warmer, like kind of yellow, or cooler, like blue. Let's leave it blue. So that's why I have a great piece of paper, because I wanna show you what happens. I'm gonna do the opposite on the bottom. So instead of exposure down, I'm gonna say exposure all the way to the right. Hey, it got really bright in the bottom. Contrast and vibrance, right, not a big deal, but warmth, I'm gonna go all the way to the right. So I basically made the top darker and cooler and made the bottom brighter and warmer. Again, simply just to illustrate how the filter works. Here's the best part of the filter is you have this thing called set orientation. So you just go grab that, and as soon as you mouse over the screen, you will see that the, um, the, the gradient um, adjustment, uh, the tool, I don't know what the hell you call it, but the thing, the thing is on the photo. Um, so you can take the thing and as you can see, you can tilt it and you can see how the light adjustments are changing as I tilt it, right? So I'm gonna go back to um, straight. I don't know if that's straight. I never get things straight. Anyway, we're gonna call that straight. Um, you can also just um, take that circle and you can drag that up or down, right? So remember, top is dark and blue, bottom is bright and warm, right? So you can do that. Um, but here's the, one of the more powerful, I think, aspects of this is that you can move the gradient zone like that. And so look what's happening to the, the dark cool and the bright warm sections of the photo. When you move the outer bands, you're adjusting what I call the gradient zone. So the top that's fully, uh, let me go back to top and show you. Remember, I went exposure negative 100 and warmth negative, so 100% or 100 to cool, whatever. Um, above this line is where you get full effect. Between that line, that top line, and this center line, you get the gradient, right? So it starts out more intense and becomes less intense as you go down. The same is true for the bottom. So if you remember the bottom, I went exposure 100, so I went all the way as bright as possible and to the right on warmth as far as I could go, so as warm as possible. And so look here, below this bottom line, so from that bottom line all the way to the bottom of the photo, it's completely bright and completely warm. Once you get from that bottom line to the center line, you have a gradient that's going the other way, it's going toward the center of the photo, and the effect is reducing gradually in a gradient manner. So 
the bottom is the opposite of the top. And I'm not talking about, hey, it's bright and warm in the bottom and it's cool and dark in the top. I'm talking about how the gradient occurs. From the center to the top, it gradually increases until you get to this line and then at the top, above the line, you get the full effect of whatever you did on your sliders. Um, for the bottom zone, from that center line to this line, you get a gradient starting with basically nothing to uh, it becomes more intense until you get to that line and then anything below that bottom line is 100% of that gradient. So I hope that helps. Now let me get my photo and I'll show you this in real life. So in this case, I'm gonna set the orientation a little bit crooked and I'm gonna expand this zone. And here's what I do. Um, I will usually just kind of mess around a little bit until I get it looking the way I want it to look. So I'm just kind of doing that here and I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I mean, I know what I'm doing. I'm not sure what the result's gonna be. I'm just kind of futzing around. That's not a bad word. Um, until I get what I like. So I'm just kind of playing here and I'm talking to you while I'm playing to distract you uh, while I kind of try to do some uh, magic or whatever you want to call it. It's not magic, uh, it's just fun. So there we go. Um, and once again, you can see my orientation is like that. My gradient zone is kind of tight. So full effect of the top is up here above the line, gradual through there. Bottom effect, gradual from zero effectively at that center to this uh, bottom line and then full effect below it. Um, I'm gonna say done. Let me show you, uh, there's the before. There's the after. You can see I basically darkened the top. You can see here, darkened, added a little contrast, and added some vibrance. And the bottom, I brightened it significantly, added a little contrast, bumped up the vibrance, and made it cooler. So I went from that, right, typical kind of, it's a cityscape, let's call it a landscape shot. Typical landscape where the sky is gonna be brighter than the foreground, right, typical. I rearranged the light, and that's one of the reasons I like adjustable gradients so much. So the before and after, right? I mean, I would do more to this photo. I would go get structure and make it negative, and I'm gonna do that real quick, because man, I can't not do something when I get my mind on it. So this is me doing my typical smoothing kind of thing, and then I'm gonna come in here with the brush. I'm gonna say erase, and I'm gonna erase that smoothing from these lovely buildings, and right bracket key to make my mouse bigger erase it from all this brick, because I don't want the brick and all that to be smooth. Let's take a look at it. There we go, missed a spot, no surprise. Jim is sloppy. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the mask, uh, and there we, there we go. So all I did is smooth out the sky and the water, which to me simulates a long exposure. But anyway, the point of this was adjustable gradient. So there's the before, there's the after. As far as the light, color, contrast, all that, one filter, my friends, and that's the beauty of adjustable gradient. I added structure or negative structure just for an artistic, uh, uh, what's the word? <laughs> an, artist, an artistic thing. I added a thing to the thing. So anyway, um, I'm gonna shut up. That was a quick deep dive into adjustable gradient one more time before and after and the slider, uh, which I love to do that compare, really shows you how powerful this filter is. That's why I think it's one of the most versatile in Luminar. I'm in Luminar Flex, you can do this in Luminar 3. You can do this in Luminar 2018. Adjustable gradient is the same in each of those products. That's it my friends, quick deep dive on adjustable gradient. Hit me up down below with any questions or comments. I'm gonna do some more of these quick deep dive. I don't know how quick it is, but it's shorter than my 15 to 17 minute Jim's prattling on about something kind of video. I'm gonna try to do a few more of these targeted kind of short videos. And I better shut up because it's not going to be short anymore. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, tell your mom, call her up, uh, whatever. I need to call my mom. So I'm going to go. Have a great one. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.